everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Food Origins Podcast. Today, my guest is Rasan Fernandez, who is the owner of Bonfo Cart and Sam's Log Cabin. Rasan was born and raised in San Francisco of Puerto Rican and Caucasian descent. Growing up in the 90s, Rasan was exposed to all the diverse cuisine in San Francisco. Rasan worked his way through the hospitality industry from California to Colorado and back. Rasan decided to start cooking his own style of food for everyone and began Bafo Cart. Circumstances also allowed him to become a part of an old roadhouse speakeasy, Sam's Log Cabin in Albany, California, which serves breakfast and homestyle Americana and Mexican cuisine. Bafo Cart started out as Rasan creating his own food for the streets and then progressed into catering and pop ups. Bafo Cart can be found these days at several different farmers markets throughout the Bay Area in Northern California, known for always having fresh and organic delicious food. Rasan and I talked about on the podcast uh, about growing up in the Mission District in San Francisco, some weird foods, seasonal produce, um, education through the hospitality industry, supporting local farmers and creating great food for the community. I appreciate Rasan for his time and support. We recorded this podcast on location inside his prep kitchen in Berkeley, California. All right, man. Hey. We're rolling. What's up? We're live. Hey, uh, you know, um, I just want to thank uh, Hassan for having me here. Appreciate Rasan. it. Rasan, get that corrected. Uh, and I have Rasan Fernandez from Bafo Cart. He's a chef there. And um, why don't you just introduce yourself? We'll tell. Uh, we'll get into the history of all, all the things you're doing. And uh, what's awesome is we're on location in his prep kitchen in Berkeley. So that's a first for the podcast. If you guys aren't listening, you guys will have to watch this later on YouTube and you'll see the kitchen. We got the fans off in here. Yeah, it's, it's going to get, get a little warm. It's going to get nice and hot. But uh, we'll power through it. We'll um, do it. And thanks for having me, and Rasan, thanks for thanks for being on. And introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, where you grew up, and your uh, ethnic background, too. Yeah, uh, my name is Rasan Fernandez. I grew up in uh, San Francisco in the Mission. And, uh, yeah, uh, so I'm half white like you. <laughs> and, awesome. But my other side is uh, Puerto Rican. Okay. Yeah. I've been going through my mom's garage right now. We're moving her out. Finding all these pictures is really cool, like pictures of my family and stuff. So that's awesome. What's the other half? Uh, Puerto Rican and like Czechoslovakian. Why she's adopted, so she doesn't really know. But the twenty three of me says German, French. You know, like a European mutt. You know. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then, uh, what area in the mission did you grow up? I grew up at twentieth and Shotwell, kind of by Folsom Park. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Good spot. An interesting area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> in the 90s, it was wild. I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's funny is that, yeah, that I used to work in that area. That was my beat for a long yeah, time. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I heard that. I was like, oh, so you know you know everything about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Uh, I know that area very well. Definitely. There was like, <laughs> I went to Horace Mann Middle School, which is at like 24th and, and almost Mission Street. So there was like a way that you walk through the, the, the two rival kind of factions there. Yeah. You can say it. There's gangs there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Rival factions is gangs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is, and that's the way it was. Yeah. It's funny, like, all this money down there, like, you know, all the tech stuff, it it, it kind of masks it, but it's always going to be there, and it's always been there. You know, it's like, it's just under the surface. Yeah. Yep. And uh, people need to realize it's still going on. Oh, yeah, it always will. <laughs> Uh, you know, this food, this podcast, of course, is about food. What did you eat growing up? Yeah, so everything. You know, growing up in the Mission, there's a lot of different, like, ethnic uh, backgrounds. So so you have Salvadoranos, you have the, you know, Mexican ra- kind of ranchero food, and then you have here and there you get some of the Caribbean stuff, which is really good. But, you know, we grew up eating everything. It was like, you know, San Francisco is such a melting pot that like you know you go out to the sunset for your dim sum you get good luck you know down by green apple books shout out nice um you know all 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 kinds of different spots from like you know mostly hole in the walls though like 
That's the best. Honestly, to me, it's the best. Always. Yeah, and I was just thinking about one uh, that uh, somebody did an article on, uh, I think, last week. Omar, I think he's a food critic. He uh, he did Yamo. Do you know about Yamo? No. Burmese spot? No, I got to know, though. Yeah, we'll talk about it later, but it's a, it's a very mom and pop. I think it's two sisters that run it, and it's uh, Burmese. It's new? It's No, it's been there probably... God, almost 20 years, what I part think, of the now. Scene? 18th and Mission. Oh, damn. Right off the Wow. There. Like by Sunflower. Yeah. That's right cool. by the, there's like a Vietnamese market, I think, down the street from it. Just very, you would, if you don't know it's there, you, you yeah, would miss it. miss it. It literally has one door and 10 seats. Mm -hmm. It's counter seating, kind of like Arts Cafe in the city over on Judah, where there's just, just counter seating only. Arts is like a breakfast like, you spot. You can get the best thing. In San Francisco, in an eight seat spot, and yeah. pay eight dollars for yeah. it. You know, and everything I mean? is under ten bucks yeah. too on yeah, the yeah. menu. Totally. So they got like curry chicken. They do like a beef noodles. They do a tea leaf salad. Love all that. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't go wrong with all that stuff. Most island food is good, man. Like you know. Yeah. And like you know, being in, Puerto Rican, did you did you eat a lot of Puerto Rican food too, or? You know, I didn't grow up with my father. Like I okay. I like grew up with a lot of Mexicans. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a lot of Mexican food, and, like, I kind of found... My parents are both from the East Coast. My dad's from the Bronx. My mom's from New Jersey. And, like, I kind of found that stuff later on when I was, like, you know, older. Just tra just starting to travel around and stuff? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's... So I have family out East, so we go out East all the time. And then recently I've been getting into going out to Puerto Rico and, like, you know, tr trying to, like, connect to that side a little bit so... So you got to do that through the food and you know people mm -hmm. and stuff. So what was what, what would you say your first impact with food was like, you know, especially yeah in the mission you're going to get a ton of Mexican food, a ton of Latin American food in general. Like what was like your first impact or something that you can be like, I mean, man, this is what loves food. My my family loves food. Like yeah. always, always, always. It's always been a thing since I was a little kid. Like whether it's like the Chiapino or you know like seafood stuff and like you know. My mom's, like, European kind of East Coast stuff that she grew up with. She kind of brought a lot of that stuff back. Going out to the East Coast, like, New Jersey has tomatoes and corn like nobody. Like, the food there is simple but excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, that's partly why I like your cooking as well. Like, it looks simple, but obviously it's put together in a, in a really good way. And that's, you know, that's what attracted me to, you know, Bafo Cart. But let's get into, you know, so, you know, growing up in the mission and then what would, did, did you always had an idea that you wanted to be a chef or did it just kind of gradually progress? No, man, you know, being from like, kind of like a single family household, I just cooked for myself from an early age and like, you know, when I was putting myself through school, it was like, what's the thing I know how to do best? My first jobs were like, you know, I worked in, I worked at Noe, Noe Bagel. I, you know, I, the first jobs that I had were like working in food and then put myself through college working in food. And then by the time I was like out of college, I was really proficient. Uh, and I ended, so I ended up moving when I was 18 up to like the Truckee Tahoe area. I was chefing at golf courses when I was like 20 so like head chef golf course 20 built by Frank Lloyd Wright you know and then I didn't really see a reason to continue school because I, I felt like I was already kind of the shit You're going to you school. know yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 but I mean you are getting schooled in in the restaurants right absolutely what was so many people pay for it and it's just like you can get paid learn you learn actually you learn a, a lot better under fire than you will you know if you're paying someone to teach you yeah, I think it, and, and it depends on the instruction too. Like some academies are just, you know, pumping them out and the class is full of 50 people. And, and maybe that's just me too. Maybe I'm just boneheaded like that. Like a, no, a you're, bit, you're right. Like a lot of actual. chefs that I know that said, like, you know, they want to know where you got trained and they want to know the ratio of teacher to student, you know, and if the teacher to student is high, like teachers cooking way down there in class and you don't even get to touch anything it's like you're not learning anything. no that's not cooking yeah, yeah that's not cooking at all so um you can do that at home you can watch right. that on at home and, and take notes which most chefs i know you know their collections they're they're you know cookbooks are like baseball cards you know like that people got massive collections that they sit and learn from 
you know, or gather inspiration from, you yeah. know, all that. Yeah. For sure. So once you started cooking, what was it like cooking at those resorts? So those are, if people don't know, Frank Lloyd Wright's a famous architect. Um, my dad's a big fan of his. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, he's got and, a group of architects called Talisman Architects. That's kind of his company. And they, they continued after he died. Yeah. And so they built a place called Nakoma up in uh, just outside of Lake Tahoe area. I was a chef there for like four years, five years, and then worked around Tahoe because I yeah. love it up there. It's just nice. Um, and, you know, working as a chef at a – working at a chef at a resort. Put some air in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you it was going to get hot. Yeah, it's like a good. little sauna. It's like uh, taking schwitz and uh, talking about cooking. Yeah. Um, so where was I? I was talking about uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Nakoma was cool. Um, working at resorts is awesome, especially as a young person, because it's like, you know, the as as a cook for a restaurant, the the bottom line is never really taken care of. You're always just struggling to make money. And at a place like that where they're making money off rooms, they're making money off golf, you know, you have some you have some leisure to spend money like that. You know, if you're a 20 year old working at your own restaurant, you're not going to take the risks that you do working at a golf course, you know, where, where they want high end and where they want you to buy the best. So, you know, it's kind of like a playground and you get to play golf like there's nothing like that. You know, like yeah. when you're when you're off of off of work, playing golf, like hanging out with people because there's a big community of workers. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good it was a good time. Yeah. So break time is golf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You go up to tee off a couple of rounds and, you know, or, or to the driving range or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. And then uh, where'd you go from there? Um, so. <laughs> I ended up coming, let's see, when I when I left there, I went down to Sonoma, trained in Sonoma, uh, really got my chops. Like, I thought I was good, and then I got to Sonoma, and, like, everybody was, like, Superman in the kitchen, you know what I mean? So I ended up, you know, there's, there's like, a... There's there's a, a line in one of Wu Tang's songs like you got with a sick ass click and went all out like that's what it was you know what I mean like I ended up working for this dude Dino Bugica in in uh, Hillsburg area at Santi Taverna which is closed now but he opened a place like right ac right across the street from where that restaurant was okay and it's it's so good so good it's called Diavola oh nice all right. And you kind of like, um, oh, I forgot to ask you this, but did you have likes and dislikes? Like, obviously, there's a lot of food in the mission that you liked, but is there anything you didn't like as a kid? Man, I could never get down with like the say sauce and like, you know, you know, explain what like that is. Brains. So, like, yeah, you know, like there's some organ meats that, like, you know, I'll try it if it's like French, you know, high end kind of like, yeah. but you know. Eating brains in a burrito is just, it's a, it's a lot to me. It's, it's not scrambled eggs, you know what I mean? People say it tastes like scrambled eggs. It's not, it does not taste like scrambled <laughs> eggs. All right. Um, That's all I wanted to know, yeah. Yeah. Still don't like it? No. I mean, you know, being, <laughs> being kind of pocho, like, like you know, being like a pocho, let, like, it's just like, that's, that's like, you know, what, like, people would call gringos or hueros or, you know, whatever, but, like, that that's not part of my upbringing, so I just don't get it. You know, some some people do, I don't. Yeah, hey, you like what you like, you don't like what you like. Right, that's right, right. I like asking it because it's it's like all areas of the spectrum. No, working people, in this industry, you. like you you get to know that it's not about the food; it's about what people like. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody doesn't like something, you can't take it personally. You just be like, oh yeah, not everything's for everybody. Yeah, you know for sure. So after the resorts, you um, start working in Sonoma. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Santi that was Taverna. Santi. Yeah. Santi. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Amazing. Amazing place. Amazing. Amazing people. Great food. Um, and then moved out to Denver and worked. Opened a restaurant in Denver. Worked a little bit for Hilton. Like like. They were opening up a hotel there. I started out with them as a sous chef, and then I was like, you know, I want to go back to California. They were understanding. It was very cool. I came back down to heat, down to uh, Oakland, like this area, and, uh, you know, 
it's been damn near 15 years since then. So awesome. a lot has happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at some of the places you worked at. Uh, where, where was Vita? Uh, Vita was in Denver. Yeah. Denver. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And like lower downtown area. Helped open that restaurant for uh, Max McCossick. Really good chef. He has a restaurant group out there. Can't remember the name of it right now, but we'll look it up. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sweet Lorraine's. Oh, Jason DiGiulio, Robbie Bright. Uh, those are my guys, man. That was that was before I started working at Nakoma. Um, where is that at? Uh, it's in Quincy. It's a little town called Quincy, where I went to college. Like I kind of put myself through school working at restaurants, like I said, and that was one of the restaurants that I worked at. That you know they can't take those memories back. Like it's just, yeah. it was just so good. What's uh what's a good memory you have from there? Making out with like waitresses. <laughs> <laughs> the there you, go. you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. just just good time. Good time right all around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just getting immersed in the hospitality, right? Yeah, kind of falling for it. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, that kind of brings us up to speed, right? Cuz w- where did you go from uh Santi? Um so Sa- after Santi came down to uh, this area, yeah. you know, open helped open Gather um, for a restaurant group here, um, Ari and... Uh, and that was funny because I was telling you I ate at Gather, and it, you were probably working there at that time. Yeah. yeah like Ten yeah. years ago, so... Yeah, good restaurant, good food. Mm-hmm. Um, right before that, I was working at... I, I was, like, work chefing at a wine bar called uh, Zaz on the Lake. Uh, it was kind of connected to this huge place that was, it was like voluminous. It was like huge. It was a big warehouse almost, but with concrete everywhere. It's a pizza place, old old school, kind of like just Italian, like straight up. Uh, but I was in charge of this uh, wine bar, this Enoteca that was attached to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, I went to Gather. Okay. And then after Gather? After Gather, I opened my own, like, I started selling food on the streets. Like, that's when my daughter was born, uh, my, my youngest, or my oldest, sorry, uh, Ella. That's when my daughter was born, and I was like, I can't do this forever. So I was, uh, you know, make you make pennies on the dollar when you're working at a restaurant like that because the time you get paid for is not the time you work. You're working 18, 16, 18-hour days. It's a lot to take care of children, so I just wasn't sleeping. You know, it was it was it was hard. Um, so I was like, not performing my best. And then at some point, they moved me to day crew. I was really happy doing that, and I was like, started working at nights for myself on the street, like cooking food, making food for people. Yeah. And the pay was so much better. <laughs> like it was like I would make three hundred dollars a day, where I was making like, you know, a hundred dollars. Working twelve hours, what, twelve bucks an hour, or something like that. It, it, well, it was it was more than that, but it still wasn't like yeah. the same kind of money, you know. No. So, um, I was just like, oh, well, I got to do this. This is, this is basic, like you know. And so it was scratchy, it was scrappy, like. But I really kind of never looked back. I started selling at First Fridays in Oakland, which is like an art murmur, like a art event. But it was really cracking at the time. Like it was really a big kind of event and uh you know we make money <laughs> and it was really nice to, to to see the career that i've chosen make some money and like I, I ask everybody who does their own thing who hustles for themselves like what that first like what their first actual like five bucks ten bucks whatever it was everyone i know knows they know the first time they sold something and they made money at it you know what i mean yeah it's like it's addictive kind of you know yeah and then is that is that pretty much the point, the starting point? You know, you can kind of give us a history. That's Waffle Cart. Yes, yeah. uh, 2010. Okay. Uh, started selling kind of on the streets, and I still have my job. Then by 2011, I was fully in farmers markets and um, starting my own restaurant. I found a restaurant. They kind of like gave it to me. You know. Yeah, in tell a, us tell us about Sam's. Yeah, so Sam's is a it's a local it's, it's a legendary spot. It's uh it's you know, kind of a local landmark. It's a little log cabin that they rolled off the railroad tracks in 1930 and turned into a roadhouse and it's kind of been like a speakeasy slash roadhouse ever since. There was betting lines coming in through the floor. Uh 
you know, from from the racetrack over there. The uh, I'm forgetting the name of the race racetrack. I think it's Bayview Racetrack. Um, but you know, Bay Meadows. Bay, uh, yeah, Bay Meadows. Or Golden Gate Fields. Golden Gate Fields. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Dollar Dollar Sundays. You know what I mean? There but, you go. Uh, Hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, you know, it's been kind of a roadhouse ever since we, during the pandemic, we so when we got in there, we broke broke out the backyard. There was like, you know, bricks and stuff laying around, bok choy growing out of like left field, um, and we kind of built it up, and now we serve primarily outdoors, um, big 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 patio, really good food, all organic. You know, we crash. There's always a line. Awesome. Yeah. What kind of food? You know, a lot. Like it's Americana, but then it's also Mexicana, and you know, it's it's just good food. Like we have pork braised collard greens on there. We have chilaquiles on there. We have all kinds of different good, really clutch food. You know, nice breakfast food. Breakfast, right on. And is it mostly a breakfast joint? Legendary scones. We're open till two p.m. Okay. I got kids. I want to go home. You know, yeah. Go go do the fathering thing. And, I like it. That's yeah. that's awesome. And you know, get into the history of Bafo Cart. Why? You know, I, I kind of you have why it's called Bafo, which was kind of cool. Yeah, it's so, an old uh, Moxie era term, right? Yeah, I mean it's slang essentially. Mm -hmm. Which, um, but you know, I grew up reading comics, and there's a there was a comic called Mr. Bafo, and it's this disheveled disheveled kind of dude, and like you know. When I started, I felt like that. And it, it just, like, I love two-syllable names for places. It sounds like Buffo, which is Italian. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's kind of influenced by all kinds of things. But the the slang meaning, the original meaning is uh, sensational. Like, it, it comes from, uh, like, Broadway kind of playbill kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. And then um, what made you – so you started on the street – kind of doing you know pop-ups basically is what we've been calling them lately but now you've gotten into the farmers markets at what point were you starting to go is that kind of where you you know once you weren't doing like a art gallery or something like that you went right to the farmers market where did you start at yeah i kind of i kind of saw that the the in business like having a regular thing is almost essential so like i started doing events and catering and stuff but having like a regular place to go to and just have regular steady money is like you know you can't beat that so we kind of got into that and as the years have gone by and that's kind of become more staple um i've been able to not do you know art events till 2 a.m. and you know i'm yeah. also older now so like i want to be at home and do sure with the kids you got kids like yeah for sure take care of family as well it's important um and then you know talk about maybe you know i probably didn't know the early days of the menu and then kind of go over what you what you got now we'll go over that but you know what'd you start out with and i know uh somewhere in there you like piadinis or something yes something going on piadina piadini like you know it, it did start out as like a like an homage to Italian food where, you know, I've worked for a lot of my life and that's with Italian people in Italian kitchens or with Mexican and Italian kitchens, you know. Um, so, yeah, at some point in the beginning, I thought I was going to do pizzas, uh, but I was like, I can't get a pizza oven. Like I had thirty five dollars and, <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I can get a grill. So I found something that I could grill that was Italian. And Piadina is like a, a folded basically like a Italian taco, like a folded piece of pizza dough that's been grilled, cheese, whatever you want to put inside it, really. Um, but, yeah, so that was the original idea. And then it kind of, you know, turned into everybody wanted something that was meat, so I came out with this chopped pork, this Italian chopped pork sandwich, was kind of Bavarian, kind of, you know, it's got... Uh, a, a strong mustard, whole grain mustard with some Dijon mustard and just braised pork. Essentially, the stuff that's boiling behind me in this big tilt skillet um, is it's chopped pork. Uh, and people love it. Like, it's, you know, 
something meat. It's a big handful of meat. People love that. I I started making more money doing that. I was like, all right, well, people say they want vegan, vegetarian, but like when it comes down to it and they you pass by a grill that's full of like a pile of like, you know, it's primal. Like it, it, I think it, for so many people, it touches their like core when they see something that they know is going to fill them up. It's not expensive. It tastes delicious. That's where it's at. So that's kind of where that came from. And then it blossomed into sandwiches because I can serve more sandwiches in a, in, a, in in the time it takes me to grill a piece of flatbread than flatbread. So that's kind of what it turned into. So it's paninis, sandwiches, burgers. We grind our own meat, do it all. Yeah, and that's kind of what I fell in love with it. And, you know, I think I started going there in like 2017 is as far back. I was looking at when I po started posting about you guys and I was like, man, it's like the just the breakfast. sandwich. I started out with the breakfast sandwich. I didn't even get to the burger because I was like, this guy knows how to make a breakfast sandwich. Whoever's because I didn't know who you, who you were back then. And I was like, whoever's making this breakfast sandwich. Mr. Boffo knows how to make a breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, great toasted focaccia the you know then the you eat greens and then some uh nice egg yeah, bacon so got, it's rosemary focaccia from acme bakery there you we go. got it. let we got him it. break it down uh so the original breakfast sandwich is rosemary focaccia from acme ba bakery uh free range eggs provolone from belgio so uh arugula and then mayo with some of the it's like a dijonese basically and then you know but it's every it's everybody's favorite. People love it. Oh, bacon from hops. You gotta yeah. have the bacon in there. If you don't have the bacon in there, you can put avocado in there or tomato in there. We're good with substitution. Yeah, for sure. And then you have a muffaletta too, right? We do a muffaletta right around the holidays, like right during the holidays and after the holidays. It's it's good. It's uh yeah, it's solid. It's uh so we do the mortadella, then copa and uh soprasata and kind of fry that on the grill, throw some cheese on it, melt it into an olive mix. It's it's super good. People love it. People ask for it all year. Yeah. But, you know, you can only have so much on the menu at one time. Yeah. And we kind of got into that with the market burger, and that's kind of how um, yeah. <laughs> me, and, me and Rasan started talking a little more because I, I got a burger one day, and uh, I didn't I read get, the I fine get a text. Print. I get a text. Yeah. He's like, you know, I don't appreciate you guys – saying there's tomato and not having tomato i had, i like as soon as i got the text i like ran out to the truck pulled out the sign and I, I like took a picture of it and sent it to him i was like yo like when we can yeah and then i realized in fine print it says when in season and it's and it's for good reason because you're like you know you can tell us but it, you know you, you have an heirloom tomato that goes on there and you just don't want something that is not in season there's reasons for seasonality like yeah. there really is like so when you have stuff in season you're able to get it from the farmers it's going to be the best top top moment that that it can have like you know tomato is a perfect example but it's the same with so many other things you know like arugula when it's not at the cart is because it sucks you know what I mean? Or like, you know, even lamb, like we like to do lamb in the spring and summer because that's when it's, it's best, you know, a winter lamb is a little fatty. It's a little greasy. Um, you, you know, I mean, there's, there's things that not only just are they cheaper when they're available at the right time of year, they're just a thousand times better. So, you know, that's the reason for tomatoes in the summertime. You know. Yeah, and I think w what I appreciated about it after the fact we had a good conversation about it is that, yeah, we you know when you look around at the farmers market, you know, um, one of your locations is the California Avenue Farmers Market in Palo Alto, which I go to quite often, and you know you look around and you're like, hey, if it's not you know regularly being produced like it's you know or it's it's not something that they make all the time or it's being grown all the time and that's that's exactly why people come to the farmer's market. They want to see what's fresh. What's the freshest thing that you got? It's not something that is, you know, manufactured to stay all season round. And we got into that talking about like, yeah, you just, that's not what the way it's supposed to be. You're just supposed to eat what's, what's available to you and try to get stuff that's, you know, close by. Yeah, man. I mean, really like, and also like, you know, if you're at the farmer's market and you see something that you don't usually see, get it because that's the best time to get it. Like if you, if asparagus season is super short, 
we we I wanted to put an asparagus sandwich on the menu, but it, it like the season's like six weeks, really. Like it's it's short, and, and um, not everybody likes asparagus. There's that too, but. Um, we have so many different things that we do seasonally. We, when we get to the market, we send our cashier out before anybody is even there really shopping. Um, and he'll go get the best tomatoes possible. He'll go get the best onions possible, get the best lettuces that we can get. Um, so, you know, like that's how we like to roll. Yeah. And uh, have you faced some challenges where you're like, oh man, this is not available, but it's something that I use a lot of, or do you just change it up on the fly? Yeah. So we have about, if we, if we don't, if we can't get it, then we don't serve it. You know, like people think as soon as the weather gets warm, like tomatoes are going to be available. So, and a big part of my money and my, and my whole operation is tomato season, because like, there's not a lot that's better than basil, tomato and fresh mozzarella. Um, shout out to Lino from Belfiore Cheese. You're the best. Uh, that's where we get our mozzarella. He's, he's awesome. Awesome. Uh, and what, I forgot what I was saying. You were just talking about, we were talking about seasonal challenges with food. Oh, yeah. And what's I mean, available. So we just change the menu as the season goes because I already, I already know. That it's, we, we've been rolling through this, this menu for so long that I, I kind of know what's going to be available when and how to rock it. Like... Eggplant's our next thing that's going to be coming out probably August, so we'll be doing the eggplant uh, parm. And baffle carts at a few locations, right? Yeah, so we have farmer's markets. You know, I just had a baby daughter about 19 months ago, so we dropped out of a few markets, but uh, right now we're doing four markets. We're doing one, Noe Valley, San Francisco. Uh, we're doing Fort Mason in San Francisco. So Noe Valley is on Saturday, Fort Mason's on Sunday. We do Calab and Palo Alto on Sunday. And we also do Temescal in uh, Oakland, which is at the Claremont DMV. Damn, rocking and rolling there. Got to gotta keep, stay busy. And then on top of that, you do some catering as well once in a while, right? You know, I, during the pandemic, I kind of laxed out on catering. And then, you know, we had our, our daughter. So I, I'm saying no to a lot of gigs right now. Um, but I'm sure in the future we'll come back to it. Yeah, but that was something you were doing quite regularly. Oh, yeah. for a, I, I, yeah. I like I like it. It keeps you creative, and it, it's like it keeps you doing, uh, you know, new interesting things. You can get bored to cooking the same things all the time. Yeah, and you were making – I mean, once in a while you'd post some stuff from the catering, and I'm like, oh, man, that looks good. Yeah. I mean, They're coming I out to the car. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, awesome. Yeah, I, you know, like – it's it's nice to be able to make new things and try new things out and make some of the things that you love to make that you know you can't make for a farmer's market booth for sure now we're in the bay area both of you and i are san francisco natives born and raised you i'm sure you have a few spots that you want to talk about maybe some some, some friends some of your favorites or even it doesn't have to be your friends but like yeah yeah. Give us some of your favorites, and we'll put them in the show notes later. Uh, well, I'm going to a spot. I'm taking my girl to a spot on Wednesday called Secret Garden, uh, Secret Kitchen. That's uh, Naja, Guillermo, and uh, Janine. Uh, they have this little restaurant that's supposed to be really, really good. Um, there's a lot of spots that, that I love. I love I, uh, let's see. Uh, you can rattle them off. It's all good. Yeah, out here in the East Bay, like, you know, what are some of the spots? God damn, I'm freezing up now. I don't want to, like, I don't want to, like, uh, you know. Don't worry about leaving anybody out because we'll get anybody off air in the notes, and I always do that. So there's, like, don't worry about that. It's just whatever is, comes to mind. Yeah. So this is, we're in Berkeley, Oakland. So jo a lot of Joya Pizzeria is one of my favorite pizza spots. Ba bar none. Like I, I, I'll be honest. Like I, I like, like I said, I like the hole in the wall spots. Like there's a, there's a place that used to be Kingston on Solano Avenue. That's really, really, really cracking. Kind of session one spot. Mm. Um, I love Polera Pizza. They're good. Uh, as far as Mexican food, I honestly, my favorite spot. It's it's not San Francisco. I like I won't say it's not San Francisco quality, but it's 
it's got it's got a patio outside and it's really nice you know it's like a nice joint it's called La Mission it's on University um, and they make a, a, a an appropriate burrito to San Francisco like it's almost as good as El Farolito or you know okay uh, all right yeah. did you ever eat at La Taqueria yeah that's the okay spot. that's the spot yeah the little burrito the everybody, little burrito. everybody loves the little burrito no like, rice yeah yeah no it's awesome uh, any spots in Berkeley that you love uh berkeley yeah there are spots but i can't think of anything right now I, i'm like uh you know I'm, so there's a spot right by me where i'm at is called good to go it's like uh taiwanese food it's hella good Ooh, yeah. that sounds awesome it's a hole in the wall but it's good nice i like it and then um before we close it out i have some fun questions is favorite since we are in the kitchen what's your favorite tool in the kitchen um, so, um, let's see, the Samaritz Elite is one of my favorite knives. It's, uh, by Wustoff. Uh, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but mm. it's the most balanced, most beautiful knife you can own. Uh, it's such a good knife. Uh, I like the Scimitar. Scimitar for working with meat is a really special knife because you get a lot of blade surface per, you know, what you're working with. Um... Let's see. A fish spat is is invaluable. If you can get a fish spatula in your life, you'll be happy you did. Uh, works for draining things out of a pan. Works for picking things up and not taking grease with you. Uh, you know, just a great flipper all around. Um, yeah, so if I had three things, it would be like my favorite knife, a fish spatula, and a really good spoon. Nice. Maybe we'll get a picture of a couple of those. <laughs> But he was working, he was prepping pork when I first came in, and I was like, well, you know, we could do it while you're prepping, or, or, but as we got it, you know, stewing in the back here. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see, you can see the, the, you can uh, see steam the steam coming, steam off coming off out the back yeah, yeah, yeah. there, right uh, over your shoulder. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, let's see, you know, wooden block cutting boards too like in yeah. my house we just mm -hmm. redid the kitchen I, I i did it myself we got all this tile in the background i'm still working on but it's uh having a like a, a good sturdy big cutting board makes cooking much better yeah 100 percent. recipe or dish anybody should everyone should try uh, so either a dish that's cooked somewhere that you're like, you got to try this at this place or a recipe that you like and you're just like, you need to so make now, this. Now that it's yourself. tomato season, yeah. uh, Burma Superstar has this this uh, curry with tomato and egg and okra. It's one of my favorite things in the world. It's so good. Mm. It's just like comfort food, but it's delicious. Um, as far as cooking goes, like there, uh, I've, there's a book called Coconuts and Curries that I think anyone, I would recommend to anyone. There's some ball. All of their some balls are really, really good. And this is a lady from the UK who, who like went to Indonesia and kind of refound her roots through food. And it's good. Solid. Awesome. Yeah. I think uh, we're just about there. Any advice you want to give? Anything you want to promote? This will be out in a couple of months. But, you know, I appreciate your time. And, and to support your local farmers and, you know, be a good person. <laughs> there you go. Do your thing. Simple yeah. as that. Thanks, Rasan. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everybody. We're out of here. And as a quick reminder, the restaurants and gear talked about on each episode can be found on my website, foodoriginspodcast.com. I appreciate your support, and thanks for listening.